Hai Sobat Iptek, tahu kan kalau dunia akan terus berkembang dan berinovasi? Contohnya kendaraan kita yang kini masih menggunakan bensin yang akan habis sehingga akan berkembang menjadi kendaraan listrik yang bersumber energi terbarukan listrik agar lebih efisien, mengurangi efek rumah kaca, bahkan emisi karbon sebanyak 43% dibanding mobil biasa. Hebat kan? Semua ada berkat komponen utamanya untuk menyimpan energi yaitu baterai litium. Baterai litium adalah baterai dengan energi besar dan bobot yang ringan. Dibanding baterai biasanya, baterai litium dapat dicas sehingga banyak dipakai di barang elektronik sehari-hari. Ada tiga komponen, anoda, katoda, dan separator. Kandungan tertinggi di katoda yaitu nikel, mangan, dan kobalt. Tapi nikel lah yang bisa menyimpan energi terbanyak sehingga jadi unsur utama pada baterai litium dengan tasio terbanyak 80%. Negara kita sangat beruntung karena ternyata Indonesia adalah sumber nikel terbesar di dunia. Harusnya bisa membuat industri dan mengolah material nikel menjadi baterai litium sendiri. Sayangnya Indonesia belum ada wadah bagi para ahli untuk bersatu dan membuat teknologi yang bisa mewujudkan itu. Maka Menristek menugaskan Ibu Evi untuk memimpin riset mengenai baterai litium dan materialnya yang dilakukan di Puspitek. Ibu Evi telah menekuni teknologi dan material nuklir selama 30 tahun. Kini Ibu Evi menjadi presiden MRSI, INSS juga mendirikan NDRI. Ketiga organisasi ini saling melengkapi dalam riset pembuatan teknologi yang dapat mengolah nikel dan bahan baku lainnya menjadi baterai litium. MRSI fokus meneliti material seperti nikel dalam pembuatan baterai, NDRI meneliti pembuatan baterai yang efektif, dan INSS fokus mengembangkan teknologi nuklir untuk membaca kerja litium dalam baterai. Ketiganya, selain bertujuan memajukan penelitian, juga menjadi wadah bagi para ahli di Indonesia untuk terus bekerjasama mengembangkan inovasi teknologi energi di Indonesia. Dengan kayanya sumber daya alam dan kemampuan mengembangkan teknologi sendiri, Indonesia akan menjadi negara yang independen dan inovatif. Hai Sobat Iptek, tahu kan kalau dunia akan terus berkembang dan berinovasi? Contohnya kendaraan kita yang kini masih menggunakan bensin yang akan habis sehingga akan berkembang menjadi kendaraan listrik yang bersumber energi terbarukan listrik agar lebih efisien, mengurangi efek rumah kaca, bahkan emisi karbon sebanyak 43% dibanding mobil biasa. Hebat kan? Semua ada berkat komponen utamanya untuk menyimpan energi yaitu baterai litium. Baterai litium adalah baterai dengan energi besar dan bobot yang ringan. Dibanding baterai biasanya, baterai litium dapat dicas sehingga banyak dipakai di barang elektronik sehari-hari. Ada tiga komponen, anoda, katoda, dan separator. Kandungan tertinggi di katoda yaitu nikel, mangan, dan kobalt. Tapi nikel lah yang bisa menyimpan energi terbanyak sehingga jadi unsur utama pada baterai litium dengan tasio terbanyak 80%. Negara kita sangat beruntung karena ternyata Indonesia adalah sumber nikel terbesar di dunia. Harusnya bisa membuat industri dan mengolah material nikel menjadi baterai litium sendiri. Sayangnya Indonesia belum ada wadah bagi para ahli untuk bersatu dan membuat teknologi yang bisa mewujudkan itu. Maka Menristek menugaskan Ibu Evi untuk memimpin riset mengenai baterai litium dan materialnya yang dilakukan di Puspitek. Ibu Evi telah menekuni teknologi dan material nuklir selama 30 tahun. Kini Ibu Evi menjadi presiden MRSI, INSS juga mendirikan NDRI. Ketiga organisasi ini saling melengkapi dalam riset pembuatan teknologi yang dapat mengolah nikel dan bahan baku lainnya menjadi baterai litium. MRSI fokus meneliti material seperti nikel dalam pembuatan baterai, NDRI meneliti pembuatan baterai yang efektif, dan INSS fokus mengembangkan teknologi nuklir untuk membaca kerja litium dalam baterai. Ketiga Selain bertujuan memajukan penelitian, juga menjadi wadah bagi para ahli di Indonesia untuk terus bekerja sama mengembangkan inovasi teknologi energi di Indonesia. Dengan kayanya sumber daya alam dan kemampuan mengembangkan teknologi sendiri, Indonesia akan menjadi negara yang independen dan inovatif.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon oh, everyone. Oh, My name is Andika oh, and I will be the master of ceremony of this lecture. First, I will read the rules. Laying of presence will be provided at the end of the event. A certificate Okay. Hello everyone. Okay, sorry for the technical problem. Of this lecture. Okay, I'll read rules to this event. Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Barry from BSM. So, this information for you, Mr. Andika. Your voice is not good, your sound is not good. Thank you. My name is Dika and
Prof. Dr. Renat F. Kartini. And then the second agenda will be from Mr. Adit Riguno who will explain about the NBR members. And also after that will be the lecture will be from Prof. OECD about cathode material for high performance aluminum battery. And also the posting statement from FRT. So at the end, we will close this session with. Hello everyone. So there is some technical issues from Mr. Andika and now we can start with the opening remarks from Professor Dr. Nath Research Center for Hello? Can you hear me clearly? Okay. Uh, okay. I'll continue. Technology Hello. Last. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, my pleasure uh, to welcome all of you uh, for this uh, lecture, uh, sales free. Uh, so, uh, so today uh, we will have the uh, okay. Okay. So this is the serial lecture of the NBRI uh, number three. Uh, the title is Future Generation of Battery and Study Opportunity in Singapore. Yeah. Also, uh, statistically, uh, data for this event. So uh, we have made a statistic by occupation, by institution, by age, 
and country.
still see you and clear that you're still uh, hear your voice. I'm sorry, it's a uh, good question. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes? Okay. Uh, yes. uh, can you hear me? Yes, Prof. We can hear sorry, you. Sorry, yes, I'm we sorry. Do. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hartini. Your voice is not yeah. good. Yeah. Not good. So I, maybe I have to change yeah. to the other line. Okay. Yes, I, I I'm trying to to okay, find. Uh, this is the the problem with the the line. Yes. Thank you, Professor Effie, for the opening remarks. I will use. Is in that tutup? Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. No. Can you clear, clear? No, you can hear me clearly. Okay. Okay. Yes, right. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Cartini. Yes, right. Please go on. Uh, very clearly. Okay. Okay. So I, I have to use my own mobile. Okay. Uh, what? Maybe I take the wrong. Okay, I'm sorry to repeat again. Uh, this is the connection I tried. So yeah, you should use my mobile phone. So uh, still there. Oh, yeah, now you can uh, uh, hear me clearly. Yes. Yeah. Okay, for, for, we have this uh, country. When So, uh, also then of the majority of Indonesia.
And our we we have uh, this one special tools which we call NBRI One Map. So this is where you can find all about the resources, end users, battery manufacturers, and research facilities. So just one click away to find all the information about batteries in Indonesia. So resources is a map to collect the data about company that produce raw materials for battery. So it's the nickel mine and the cobalt mine and all the mining companies. End users is the map that shows the user of the battery. So it's the motorcycle companies and all the solar panel companies. And battery manufacturer is the map show, showing the manufacturers that produce the battery. So it's like, uh, like ABC and uh, NIPRES. Uh, facility is a map for collecting the data about uh, research facility at conducting the, re the research related to battery. So we are plotted the location of each stakeholders in the map. So if you want your company or your institution to be plotted in our map, uh, please contact us directly. And also please uh, register as our member. So to if you want to join and become our member, you can register on our website. You can choose the membership as individual, institution, or corporate. And 
by then you can always have an update from us uh, related to our next event so for all uh, panelists speakers and viewers uh, please uh, have a minute to register as a member on our website since we are supporting the ministry of research and technology to gather all the stakeholders of battery so related to our website, uh, this website delivers our vision to have a broad picture on battery industry ecosystem in Indonesia, ranging from resources and useil and pri.org. So this is our homepage of our website. So below we will see the uh, about NBRI. This is about us. This explains who is NBRI, our vision or milestone our value and our team members, and also our expert panel. And also we provide this uh, publication uh, platform. So we post on energy storage, and also we provide links and platforms for our members to promote their uh, research publication on our website. And we have also the research panel so there are several main topics related to lithium ion battery, such as lithium ion, beyond lithium ion, uh, industry concern, battery characterization, Indonesia research community, Indonesia research highlights, and also one is the Indonesian national research priority. All of these topics related to novelty, research project, and also recent issues that being concerned in Indonesia. So we also, uh, provide the opportunities so this is a panel that will show the opportunities that will be given by the industry and corporate members such as uh, to vocational high school so we have uh, internships uh, job opportunities and industry fellows corporate uh, members if they have any sense to uh, to open the job vacancies and internships and they will post the the job vacancies at our website and we also have the education. Uh, we have a training program and seminars for vocation and corporate members that want to learn about energy storage. Uh, also, we provide the syllabus and lecturers. Therefore, the program is not only theory, but also application too. The training and seminars are various and available for all stages from undergraduate until PhD and early career researchers. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, this is the uh, concept, the original concept of NBRI. It was founded by Prof. Evi Kartini in 2014, and it was launched in October 2019 and legally established in 2020. Uh, this, we mainly a platform that connects all the academic, the government, and also the manufacturers so we have a good collaboration to have a, a, a research that can be bridged into the manufacturers and also the human skills that can be developed to fulfill the manufacturer's needs. For the five years, the ultimate milestone is to support Indonesian battery manufacturer with local resources starting from its raw materials and human resources. It also corresponds to Indonesian government to establish the biggest integrated center of battery manufacturing industry in the world, focusing on electric vehicles. So we aim to establish a battery university in 2024 and startup incubator in 2023 and small enterprises of battery industry in Indonesia. So one of the application of lithium ion battery is a power wall. It is a rechargeable lithium ion battery stationary energy storage intended to be used for residential purpose, which can store electricity from solar panel or grid power. It can be used for backup power where, when blackout occur, and also to be used at night where solar panel is off. It is developed by PT Infinity Energy Indonesia. It is a company that manages NBRI in terms of management and administration. So Infinity Energy Indonesia was founded uh, in 2018. It's one-stop green and safe energy solution company in building industry 4.0. Infinite Power ever from its establishment is committed 
to provide safe and green power solutions for all of our all partners. Our values lie on the flexibility to customize your own product according to your needs. We provide the battery model that suits every customer's needs. So these are our products. Uh, the products developed by Invian covers all segments such as residential, industrial, and transportation. One of our greatest inventions is the power wall. We also develop smart solar lighting that back up by, powers, uh, by solar panel and lithium ion battery, which is more efficient and durable than the lead acid battery. We have also developed a portable energy storage to be used in remote areas. Also, we have developed a battery for electric motorcycles that can be customized based on your specifications. Okay, that's all I can share about our website. Uh, for further information, you can contact us through email and address. Uh, also, you can uh, visit our website to become our members. Thank you for such the opportunities given to me. It will, I will give back to the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Adit, for the introduction of the NBRI and Infinity Energy. Now, I would like to give the spotlight to Professor Evi Kartini as the moderator of this lecture. Professor Evi, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Andika. Uh, thank you also, uh, Adit, for. Uh delivering the uh, introduction about the NBRI, also Infinity. Uh, okay, now we come to uh, the most important part of today. Uh, I would like to introduce our guest, uh, the first guest lectures, uh, uh, Professor Arif Budiman. Uh, Professor Arif Budiman uh, got a bachelor degree from the mechanical engineering from Bandung Institute of Technology. Yeah, uh, he had a master uh, engineering from Monash University, from Monash University, and then a PhD from Material Science and Engineering, uh, Stanford University. And uh, Mr. Ari Budiman also is a research co coordinator at the Master of Industrial Engineering at British University. So uh, according to his experience, he spent more than five years, uh, more than 25 years abroad. So he will share his experience either in the USA or in uh, Singapore. Okay, please. Uh, Ari Budiman, time is yours now. Work. Uh, on battery. Um, we are all really excited about. Battery and um, uh, what it can enable us for. Uh, can you see it or also all others? Can you see my slides?
you can see my slides. Yes, the slide is clear, Mr. Arif Liman. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, hello. Breaking. I would like to share uh, my work. Okay. Sorry for interruptions. Could maybe you could 
picture of your video so your voice is not breaking. Thank you. Halo Prof. Prof Budiman. Uh, ah, yeah, ya yeah, ya, Prof yes, Hevi. Okay. I can hear you clearly. Yeah. Okay. No. okay. Please uh, continue. I think before it there is a technical problem. I think uh, I think uh, doubling etc. Ya. Yeah? Oke. Okay. Uh, please. Oke. Okay. Uh, I hope I uh, uh, oke. Okay. I uh, I hope you can hear me. Ya. Yeah. It's clear now. Uh, next, I uh, really want to talk about the uh, uh, enabling low-cost nanostructure uh, anode. So, okay, let's get right into it. Uh, so, we'll talk about the background first. I think uh, in, for this community, we don't buy rechargeable uh, battery. Uh, we need for electric car, we need for our computer, we need for renewable energy, uh, and oh. Uh, it's actually a simple uh, in house uh, and then you uh, energy from the sun and then you store it in the power wall and then you recharge your car and then uh, you are putting uh, zero carbon footprint. That's uh, the vision of the which I really okay. um, This is very busy, but uh, what I want to say now is that uh, about materials, materials, materials. It's not in that we uh, also is. Um, I I know I think some in the audience are interested uh, in terms of the design, um, been more oh but what to talk uh, to is.
And that means uh, the boy is uh, getting more hands on. And uh, hello.
and anodic is close to 0 0.7. So indicating is rather Compared to a control sample with the lithium score, capacity control is less dominant. So it shows that the C factory can also be achieved. And we have now uh, used the uh, fiber shaped aluminum hybrid battery by making a flexible fiber. So from here, uh, we can see that the superior hybrid battery is much better compared to the aluminum battery. And the high volumetric capacity can be achieved in enhanced weight capability. It's able to enhance the charge transfer kinetics and open framework with good lattice structures that is suitable for um, long-term cycling stability for aluminum batteries. The VO2 also serves as an efficient mediator to trap soluble polysulfides and enhance the redox reactions. So the hybrid aluminum strategy that is uh, towards a form factor that is highly flexible and stretchable. So in some of these articles that we have communicated, we show our vision of making stretchable uh, energy stock. So with this, I acknowledge uh, the funding agency as well as my group members. I'd like to give a few words about NTU, Nanyang Technological University, and pursuing graduate studies with uh, the U.S. Uh, the uh, QS uh, um, World University Ranking, we're ranked number third. In the U.S. News, is ranked number first. And from here, uh, we can see the beautiful campus of NCU. And uh, these are some teachers and students. Our faculty are highly dedicated in training uh, students and also the mentorship for students are highly intensive. As the Dean of Graduate College, I'm very proud of our graduate students in order to remind everybody to still go for a regular health check despite uh, the pandemic. And uh, lastly, a few words about the support for study in Singapore. In NTU, we have the Nanyang President Graduate Scholarship and we have the SINGA International Scholarship and, and full-time PhD as well as master's for PhD studies. So it will be up to four years and for master's is for two years. With that, I thank you for your attention and welcome to NTU.
Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for Prof Ali. It's amazing. Yeah, amazing lecture. From yeah. Uh, now we come to the, uh, I think, I'm sure there are some uh, questions from uh, all the audience. Both Zoom and uh and the Google Meet. Uh, any question from the audience? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm in both. Uh, Alan? Alan? From UK, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, maybe I will ask the question to Ali. Okay. As okay. okay. you uh, have to uh, start the lecture. Okay. Uh, thanks. I think um, I hope I got the question right, but um, no, you, you don't hear anything. No? I can hear you, but can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Um, the pros. Uh, maybe I I try to. Maybe this is better connection now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, the process that I used to create the silicon and wire. Uh, as I. Yeah, go ahead, Prof. Evie. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, the question is uh, when you uh, 
prepare the material, okay? And then let's uh, show you the cost is, uh, yeah. Or it's only using for, uh, for the same film or small application. This is my question. Uh, yeah, I think the question is about scale. Um, so the technique that we use uh, for the uh, for the experiment that we show is a metal assisted chemical etching, and it is using um, a silicon equation. It's, uh, it's, it's like a standard uh, silicon wafers, and um, so that's the, the size we can go up to, um, the, the maximum size. Uh, so that's for basically using semiconductor uh, fabrication. Uh, however, the one that I presented, uh, the, uh, the, toward the end of my talk, then, uh, that's actually something uh, much more easily to scale because uh, this is basically just an electro spinning uh, experiment and um, we produce a uh, uh, much larger sample. I hope that answers your question. Uh, uh, Question to the It has Something wrong with uh, maybe uh, 
voice is delayed. Sorry, the Prof. Okay, I saw a question here in the chat box uh, regarding the self discharge of aluminum iron battery and how to solve that. Okay, actually, it is not a self discharge. It is um, due to the cycling because of the aluminum iron. It has very strong electrostatic force. Can prevent the reversible deintercalation. So when you have the amount of ions coming into the cathode, they will be uh, less amount going out from the cathode during cycling. It is not due to self discharge, but is the poor reversibility caused by electrostatic attraction of the aluminum ions to the cathode material. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we we'll see. Thank, thank you, Prof. Uh, there are some questions from the audience. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, the question from whom? The question from whom? Mr. Agi. Mr. Egi, can uh, direct the, raise the question to the uh, to both lectures? Mr. Egi, can Mr. Egi, can can you uh, raise the the question? So I will read the question from um, uh, uh, Mr. Egi. Okay, to Prof. Uh, Fu, uh, your hybrid aluminum lithium ion battery is quite interesting. How do you confirm the lithium ion would intercalate and the intercalate in your system? Okay, what is the mechanism since your uh, lithium source is only from electrolyte? That is a question. That is a question. Uh, the second question for Prof. Arif. During your testing with synchrotron device, how did you maintain the lithium with a uh, uh, flooded electrolyte or one contact with air? Okay. Do you consider different microstructure uh, tracking during lithiation? What is your opinion? Okay, please uh, answer the question. Prof. Lee first. Prof. Lee. Okay. I vaguely hear the question. It's about how do we um, allow the lithium to uh, take action at the cathode and the aluminum on the anode. So basically, in the hybrid battery, because the lithium are much faster during the charge and discharge, so it has a tendency to go to the cathode side uh, due to the faster kinetic. Whereas on the inlet side, it's because of the thermodynamics of aluminum deposition, so it is much faster going into the anode. So on the anode side, it's predominated by the aluminum, whereas on the cathode side, it's only the lithium. So that is why we call this a hybrid uh, lithium and aluminum battery. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe one, one more. Uh, 
well, in, in the real battery, we use the cathode, uh, the uh, current collector, this aluminum foil. Okay. Is that, uh, well, uh, influence or just uh, because you, you already also made the, the full cell? Yeah? Is there any problem or how? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the aluminum as uh, using aluminum foil as the anode material. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, aluminum foil you use in the cathode yeah. in the real battery. Yeah. Yes. How 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 this? Uh, because you have the aluminum ion and then how it? Uh, yeah. Right. In the aluminum, we have the aluminum trichloride with right. the ionic liquid. So the aluminum will form the um, complex in the iron and it has the tendency to go to the cathode, which is the cathode material that we are investigating now that is based on uh, the vanadium oxide. Oh, okay. Okay. So this, you have that. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, now, uh, the question to Prof. Arif. Uh, yeah, okay. So I think the question is about the uh, in situ experiment. Right. Uh, let me share my screen uh, because I think. Um, Okay, okay. Can you see my screen? Can you see my slides again? Yes, yeah, so we can see. Uh, uh, this is like, well, I consider this detail, so I didn't actually show it in the presentation. But uh, basically, uh, uh, the experiment is not done in um, ambient, it's uh, done in a fully uh, closed environment. We design the batteries uh, cell. Uh, so this is actually quite intricate design. The idea is uh, we want to be able to do uh, uh, as real as possible electrochemical lithiation uh, while being able to see the silicon on the wire. So as you can see here, uh, so you have the cell inside. So this is actually the... Uh, this is basically the side uh, view. So uh, the battery cell itself is, uh, is here and it's fully uh, sealed. Uh, so it's not in ambient. So it is real electrochemical lithiation. But at the same time, through this window, my x ray can come in. Uh, and this is actually the uh, captain. So it's transparent to x ray. And because of that, I can see uh, what happens uh, in the uh, in the silicon and wire. Uh, so that that test uh, so basically this is a vehicle test. This is test vehicle basically uh, uh, to allow us to do this experiment. So we have the X-ray, uh, we have the silicon and wire. Uh, and we have the lit electrochemical lithiation, uh, and it's a real electrochemical uh, lithiation, and uh, we see what happens to the silicon and wire while it is being lithiated. So, uh, yeah, I hope I answer your question. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't show this because I consider these uh, details in the experiment. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Arif, because it's, uh, yeah, not, not, not all of us uh, also working on like the neutron and synchrotron, yes? So yeah. curious how, how it works, yeah? And then also because timing. And then that, that's good. Uh, okay, uh, so I will read another uh, question. Uh, okay, what kind of battery with suitable for electric car? It's the same with hi uh, hybrid car. Does the battery can be recycled to another product if not useful anymore? If yes, can you mention the product? So this question uh, to both of you. 
So please uh, first uh, maybe uh, Prof Arif ya yeah, please. Maybe puisi uh, okay. go first. Uh, Prof Prof Lee first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Prof Lee, please. Um, I think I quickly hear the question is about oh. what type of battery will be suitable for electric car. Yes, right. Yes. Okay. So, uh, yes. at the present, uh, the lithium-ion battery still has the highest energy density, but there is a shortcoming that is the power density, which is insufficient to power the car with a fast acceleration. The energy density is basically to cover the range of the travel, whereas the acceleration is based on the power density. So there is a need to compensate the low power density by using alternative uh, material and alternative battery. So in this case, uh, one of the near-term approach is to add the supercapacitor to serve as a complementary system to power together with the uh, lithium battery. In the longer term perspective, developing alternative battery systems that can have similar or better energy density than lithium ion battery, but has having higher power density would be highly desirable. So in this case, uh, the alternative can be aluminum ion battery. As I mentioned just now, the theoretical capacity is very high. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are also alternatives uh, such as the lithium air or lithium sulfur battery or uh, aluminum air battery that is non rechargeable at this point. So, meaning that uh, it is the use one time kind of uh, approach. Uh, I would add to what uh, Puisi said. Um, in terms of uh, battery technology that is uh, suitable for electric car, um, I think if uh, some of you are also Tesla's fan, uh, Elon Musk fan, fan uh, you probably see batteries day. Um, but anyway, I'm Elon Musk fan. So uh, uh, one more, um, at least two more aspects um, in addition to what Kuisi has mentioned, Professor Lee has mentioned is uh, range um, and also the reliability of the battery. Uh, so the range uh, depends a lot on the energy density. So uh, that's the reason why uh, both the cathode and the electrode uh, need to have um, large uh, energy density because the energy density will determine the range Range as in like um, how long uh, a car can go before it has to be recharged. I think right now the number hovers around uh, 200, 300 miles. Uh, so uh, uh, we want it to be like uh, much higher than that. Uh, reliability is about another aspect. Uh, there is this um, million mile battery uh, in other words, uh, uh, your car probably lasts longer than um, any other car. Your, your car doesn't need repair. Your car doesn't need, uh, you don't need to change your battery. Like your, the whole life of the car, basically. Uh, so it's called a, 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 a million mile uh, battery. And um, uh, I think I see some question also uh, in the chat box. Uh, uh, one of the reason why silicon uh, nanostructure, for example, is being considered is because of this, uh, because the reliability will be, um, uh, can be controlled, um, especially with uh, 3D silicon uh, nanostructure. Uh, one last aspect uh, that I want to add to Puisi also is also uh, charging rate. Uh, for EV especially, uh, uh, we need charging rate that is um, not much longer than um, when we go to gas station and uh, fill up on our petrol in our car, for our IC car. Uh, so 
five, ten minutes. So uh, that means um, we need faster kinetics. So the lithiation need to happen much faster. Uh, and thus the 3D nanostructure is again, uh, uh, will be the way to, for, uh, the, for the lithium ion to be absorbed to the anode as fast as possible. And at the same time, uh, during the uh, uh, delitiation or during use, uh, it can live as much as possible, as fast as possible. So, uh, yeah, those are those factors uh, for uh, electric car, in my opinion. Okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, uh, Lee and uh, Prof. Arif. Uh, so uh, there is the question. Maybe you can read from uh, Mr. Daniel from uh, Ministry of Industry. Do you have any research experience regarding the cell discharge uh, in aluminum ion battery, and how to solve that? Thank you. Yeah, if the sound not clear, you may answer also directly in the chat. But please answer. Uh, just regarding the self discharge question. Right. Okay, so basically, the aluminum ion battery has a poorer cycling stability compared to the standard lithium ion battery. So, um, the loss of this um, recycling uh, during the cycling is due to the strong electrostatic force of the aluminum free plus because this has a 3 plus ion that is much higher in heart compared to aluminum, uh, compared to lithium. So it has an attraction force towards the lattice. So this strong electrostatic force causes the aluminum to be more difficult to be expelled from the lattice during the heat intercalation. So this will cause uh, poor uh, cycling stability which is still the key issue uh, in the aluminum battery. Okay, the question, uh, okay, uh, from, from Oza, yeah? From uh, Taiwan, in your opinion, how long aluminum-based battery could be applicable in commercial? And yeah, for Prof. Arif, it looks like silicon-based anode nowadays is near to commercialized era. Could you tell us, is it possible to do something like that in Indonesia? Yeah, apply silicon anode as a potential lithium and battery supporting part. Okay, please, Prof. Lee first. Okay, for the aluminum ion battery, if we are using it for just a vulnerable application where you do not need um, thousands of cycling, then it is possible uh, for commercialization. So it depends on the reliability that we're looking at um, and also what kind of applications. Uh, certainly, in terms of cost, it, is, it can be lower compared to lithium ion battery and it has the potential uh, to also support high energy density uh, with further research. I hope I agree with you. Um, okay, uh, yeah. The, the question is about um, the use of silicon in the anode. Uh, that's true that uh, silicon has been used uh, in the current anode uh, technology. Uh, so I think uh, if, um, for example, Tesla has been using, uh, or more accurately, uh, they've been mixing silicon into the graphite anode. So it's basically still a composite of uh, graphite, which is carbon-based uh, particles, and um, they mix it with silicon. So uh, with that, um, they, they basically have a hybrid uh, anode. 
where they see that the more they put in the silicon, uh, the the higher energy density they they they, they, they can get. Uh, the problem is uh, uh, again uh, that uh, silicon expand three hundred percent, so they cannot put it too much. They can just like mix it a little bit up to like maybe thirty percent or something. So uh, much of it is still carbon. So the uh, so the when uh, uh, lithium ion come in, of course uh, it comes to the silicon. It's fast, uh, so it's high energy density. But uh, mostly it is still going into the carbon. So that's what is already being commercialized. That is in the current uh, Tesla car, for example. For example, um, but. What I'm talking about in terms of uh, full silicon or 100% silicon nanostructures, um, I don't think it's uh, commercialized yet. Um, uh, I think people are still trying to figure out uh, how to get to the 3D silicon nanostructure in the uh, most economically feasible way uh, especially for high volume manufacturing uh, for real industry. Um, so that's the, that's the reason I'm proposing uh, uh, the method of the electrospinning based additive manufacturing, which I think uh, can be scalable and it's, uh, it's a simple method and it's, uh, it's not expensive, it's not highly engineering, it's not high engineering um, and uh, it can produce uh, 3D structure as we have already provided um, uh, the proof. So thank you, thank you bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, well, there are still many questions from uh, also YouTube from other, but uh, we have still also limited time. But I will give one more uh, 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 one uh, question. Why there are two two question actually <laughs> still? Okay. Uh, first, the question: Would you please tell uh, how how uh, can I join Singapore for battery or supercapacitor research work? That's my co first question. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. The the others uh, the others uh, uh, question is to Prof uh, Arif to both of Prof Arif and uh, Prof Lee. I uh, hope we can collaborate in the future because we are in the same train. <laughs> I'm also doing research silicon uh, in Taiwan. Okay, so actually this is more uh, how if we uh, we or uh, Indonesian or student or yeah they want to join the research uh, in Singapore. Okay, please uh, both of you answer. Uh, as I mentioned just now, if you are a student, of course the possibility of applying for scholarships are there. And there are several different scholarships, and Arif has also shown that. Uh, so that's the most direct way uh, to be admitted um, into the research program. Uh, because if you come in without the scholarship, then the tuition fee will be very high for uh, um, to pursue the research. If you are a research staff or scientist and you would like to be employed as a researcher, you will need to look for su suitable supervisors who has the research funding, who would be able to support your tenure during your research year in Singapore. So basically, like Arif mentioned, it's best to look at the professor's uh, expertise and write in directly to the professors who are going to interview you for the suitability of joining the research group. Oh, uh for the research group for uh, should be a PhD should should be PhD first or uh, can can they start uh, undergraduate oh. I mean uh, there are different options for younger students who wish to join the undergraduate degree program of course certainly um, the uh, uh, Singapore welcome uh, students from Indonesia uh, to join into the undergraduate program and there are plenty of scholarship to support that as well. 
Um, and we have been recruiting uh, young Indonesian students into undergraduate program. Yeah, so what I mentioned just now to join the research at the uh, higher level uh, uh, postgraduate degree, uh, which we mentioned is a PhD, um, uh, that would require uh, the scholarship for research uh, to be available. Um, maybe I can add, uh, Prof. Evi, uh, uh, for those who have master's degree, for example, and would like uh, to work in the in Singapore uh, uh, for I mean research career. Uh, I usually, for example, when I was there, I usually uh, hire research assistant, RA. Uh, so that is uh, something that uh, um, I uh, we we have the grant. We can budget for an RA uh, instead of a postdoc. Uh, so it's just different level. Uh, for a postdoc, usually I, I we would need like. Uh, somebody with PhD degree, but for RA, uh, uh, it could be uh, we could hire somebody with master's degree level because usually uh, it's a, a different uh, kind of responsibility. But uh, yeah, uh, I think if you check out the web page of uh, faculty members, uh, professors in Singapore, uh, they sometimes advertise for RA as well, especially if um, they have grants uh, and need to start as soon as possible, start like their lab work as soon as possible or something. They will try to hire RA, which I used to, which I did a lot at, at, uh, a, a few years ago. Thank you. Uh, well, if we continue, maybe maybe in another three hours, they will still want to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe we, we should have another lectures, yes, in session. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe we arrange workshop uh, really uh, with the, that is a, a workshop. It means that maybe uh, there is uh, some, uh, what is the video or yeah, uh, practicum, practice and how it works. Yeah, I think it will be uh, interesting. Maybe we, we will make it uh, the workshop uh, maybe in sometime in March. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so not only the theory from Prof Lee or Prof Ari, but uh, and from others too. But uh, you can feel also the experiment. I think we should make like that. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I don't want to final this, but uh, well, uh, we like to keep. Uh, I I will ask: Is there any uh, audience want to raise directly the question? I give one uh, chance. Okay. Uh, so, if I see here, Mr. Uh, Halason Simanjuntak, you want to, yeah, this is a good chance for you to directly ask a question. Okay, please. You can unmute and, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I already asking the, the question, yeah, <laughs> to, to the question. I think enough for me, yeah. Maybe the others, the participant, the others. Okay. Because, uh, uh, because I think uh, this is a great, yeah. This is great. This is good. Uh, uh, the more important, maybe uh, for uh, what's called uh, for 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 production, maybe uh, we can produce one or two years again, yeah, out of five years again ahead, ahead. I think enough for me. I'm just listening. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, maybe I give one more question to uh, uh, there is a Mr. Subhan here from uh, the research facility in Indonesian uh, Institute of Science. Mr. Subhan, are you still there? Okay. Well, uh, if not, okay. We come to uh, well. We, we I'm sure we will. Uh, we will prepare another uh, chance and then uh, uh, with a full meeting with uh, lectures and a module and directly the, what is the practice? Yeah, even, even only for, by, by uh, video, I think it's really be great, yes? Okay, uh, well, at last but not least, uh, well, on behalf of the National Battery Research Institute, uh, we would like to give you appreciations uh, to, First, uh, the appreciation will give 
moment. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Prof. Lee, uh, Prof. Uh, Prof. Lee, uh, it's a great pleasure for us to have you here uh, today, uh, sharing your knowledge, experience, and uh, inspiring, great inspiring lectures on the NBRI lecture, future generation of battery and study opportunity in Singapore. Thank so you. I hope, yeah. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, yeah, I hope that uh, would like as an NBRI, I would like to invite you as the NBRI expert panel. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. For the next. Okay, the certificate of appreciations uh, will be given to Prof. Arif Buriman, yes, uh, as a guest speaker on uh, and where I lecture, future generation of battery and study opportunity in Singapore. So, uh, Prof. Arif, uh, thank again first for your uh, time uh, giving the lecture here and also for introducing us properly. So uh, thank you, thank you so much. Then I hope that we can uh, collaborate in the future. Uh, yes, since you are also you now uh, coming back to Indonesia. So we will invite you also as the, an expert panel of the NBRI. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah. Thank you uh, for uh, Mr. Adit Triviguno. Yes, who already delivered uh, the introduction of the uh, NBRI. Yes, uh, and I hope that uh, the program of NBRI to it can be uh, fulfilled, can be reached the goal and the target uh, in the in the certain year. Yeah, in the future. Thank you. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, before. Uh, we close, we should take a picture together, yes, all the audience with the, all the participants. So half of the participants, they are still in uh, Google, uh, Google Meet, yeah. Okay, Sinta. Uh, yes, Prof. Okay, for all the participants, please turn on your camera so we can take a picture together. Thank you. Okay, for Mr. Javon, Mr. Teguh, Mr. Sonrizal, Arya Santituko, Mr. Budi, No Bri Anbia, Subhan, and Pa Benny, could you please turn on the video? Okay, so we're going to start to take a pictures in three, two, one. Two. One more, three, two, one. Okay, for the next slide. One, two, three. Sinta, don't forget in the Google Meet to take a oh. picture of them too. I will. Okay, thank you all. The picture is done. Yeah. Okay, uh, before we leave, there is still a, uh, yeah, announcement? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Before we leave, uh, uh, some announcement from from us, the NBRI. NBRI will uh, normally have the uh, focus group discussion. Yes. And then we have also uh, coming the uh, NBRI millennial talks uh, that will be delivered by uh, the millennial. Of course, the millennial. So please uh, come join us, and then I hope that Prof Lee and Prof Arif uh, will be with us also, maybe uh, as a panel for this uh, discussion, and then asking for this young generation to uh, yeah deliver their talk. I'm sure it will be uh, very interesting because uh, the millennial is uh, our future too, so we have to prepare them. So this uh, the talk will be given on the. Uh, on the February 11 from uh, Anissa Vijayanti from University of Indonesia, uh, got master degree uh, from uh, material uh, 
Metallurgy, uh, Rizka Ayu from NBRI, yes. Uh, she got the bachelor degree from STTN. And then Agi Aditama, uh, master degree from NCTU Taiwan. I think he is also now accepted as the student, PhD student in uh, Germany. And then Muhammad Fahrudin uh, from NBRI and also from National Atomic Energy Agency. And then also Lisda Ainia, uh, graduated from ITK, Kalimantan, but uh, she will also uh, continue in uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia. So this is, we have a uh, challenging for a millennial and then uh, I hope that you can come to, uh, why it's coming here? Yeah, uh, to this uh, millennial talk. Okay, once again, uh, thank you for uh, Prof. Lee, Prof. Arif, for uh, Adit, for uh, Sinta, Dika, and uh, Rizka, and all the participants who already joining uh, this NBRI uh, lectures. And then I hope uh, we can uh, see you again uh, soon and uh, hope that the lecture will be very useful for all of us. So keep in touch. And then, uh, yes, so welcome. And then please become the member of NBRI. So NBRI is for everybody in the world. It is uh, who interesting with the battery research or industry with the battery or anything related with battery and renewable energy. Starting from student, lecturer, a professor. Oh yeah, but of course for the professor will be put in the expert panel, okay? That is, uh, so for the better future, we will uh, get together. Thank you again. Thank you. Sorry. Thank, Thank you, Prof. Lee. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you for all. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Don't forget to follow our Instagram, uh, NBRI Indonesia, and in LinkedIn, and also uh, our membership in n-bri.org at the website. Yes. Then, yes, please. Please help. Uh, yeah, this foundation for, for all of you. We, we prepare. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Also, don't forget our next event, NBRI Millennial Talks. Please register at the link mentioned below. Thank you. Thank you, Dika. Thank you. Thank you for... Good uh, preparation. Bye. Ada yang nanya presensi ini? Mas Accessible? Thank you all for coming to the event today. We would like to remind you again to fill up the presentation link that has been given on the column of the chat. And don't forget to register yourself on NBRI. Millennial Talks on 11, uh, February 11, 2021. So, see you later, guys. Have a nice day. Kramian tadi. Kramian tadi berat.